Nowadays, neural networks demonstrate superhuman performance in many tasks, but they cannot remember what they had for lunch. <laughs> the problem is that when neural networks learn a new task, they tend to forget what they've learned before. This phenomenon is known as catastrophic forgetting. In contrast, humans and animals have a remarkable ability to learn continuously. Now there is a new research paper which describes a novel way to solve the problem of catastrophic forgetting. Basically, researchers suggest to put AI to sleep. This problem was originally described by Mikhail Maklonsky and Neil Cohen in a paper published in 1989. And the problem actually occurs when a neural network trained sequentially on multiple tasks. What happens is the weights of neural network, which are important for the task A, are changed in order to meet the needs of a task B. In contrast, we humans are capable of incremental lifelong learning. You know, I'm a lucky one. When I learned how to walk, I didn't forget how to talk. When I learned German, I didn't forget English. This would be a disaster. And we know for sure that our brain learns the best when our study sessions are separated by good rest, by periods of sleep. It's when the consolidation of the memory is happening. We humans experience something called REM sleep. It's when our experiences are moved to the long-term memory to make room for new experiences. Without this process, our brain undergoes catastrophic forgetting and new memories are just not retained. As I learned from this book, sleep is exactly what made us humans creative, innovative, and just smart. So, how do we put AI to sleep? When a neural network learns a new task, we can use a method called interleaved training. This means from time to time to feed the old training data to the neural network in order to help it to preserve the old knowledge. It is an attempt to mimic how humans' brain work during the sleep when the old memories get replayed. But here is a problem. Feeding the old data to the neural network is very slow. Moreover, it's computationally expensive and sometimes you simply have no access to this data anymore. Now, in this new paper, the researchers from University of California suggest a new, better way. They describe that in reality, that's not what our brain does during the sleep. Our brain does not use the old data and does not replay it. It simply has no time for all of this. In the new study, the researchers, instead of using conventional neural networks, use spiking neural networks, which closely mimic the way our brain works. Instead of delivering a constant stream of information to neural network, here the data is provided with spikes at specific times. Actually, when we humans learn new information, our neurons fire in a specific pattern. When we sleep, those patterns fire spontaneously in a process known as reactivation or replay, which is actually reinforcing new memories. But machines, machines do not sleep. It's more or less a constant stream of consciousness and old memories in previously were just erased in order to incorporate new ones. However, when researchers introduced small periods of offline time or rest time, basically mimicking sleep between these learnings, then neural networks were able to learn multiple tasks and also to retain this new knowledge. In this research, they've trained a neural network model to spot horizontal pairs of particles in a grid, and then they trained the same model to look for vertical pairs. After being trained for the second task, neural network is expected to forget how to solve the first one. 
when in between training the researchers made the neural network to go through tasks where the neurons from the first task were activated. Then neural network was capable of performing both tasks. And as it turns out, this approach is not limited to the spiking neural networks only. Then I was reading another paper. So this paper describes how we can achieve um, continual learning for conventional neural networks. Let's assume that we have a model which is trained for some image recognition task. Let's say we have lots of MRI images of a brain and we want to do a segmentation task on it, finding where is gray matter, where is white matter, and other types of matters. <laughs> Let's say you train the model to do just that, and then you would like to extend this model. So on top of that, you would like it to do segmentation of the white matter lesions. Eventually, we want this model to be able to perform both tasks and we don't have the access to the old data so we would like to train it on a new set of data. We expect that leaving out the old data will lead to significant drop in the performance of the model for the old task. Based on this paper we can actually solve this problem using elastic weight consolidation technique. The main idea is very simple. Yes, we lost the access to the old data but we still have the model and its parameters. What we have to do is, during the training, we have to punish the model every time it lets its parameters to deviate far away from the old parameters. If we train it in this way, then the performance for the old task should not drop too much. The problem here is that the parameters are all considered to be equally important which is of course not the case. It could happen that some parameters are allowed to deviate a lot, while others should strictly remain unchanged. But how do we tell which parameters are important and which are not? And here we need to use Fisher information. It's basically used to set the importance of parameters, and it's actually often used in the reinforcement learning. For instance, when AI learns how to play games. It works like this. If a parameter is important, Fi is set to a large value. Otherwise, it is set to a small value. Basically, a higher Fi will mean that the model will be punished more for deviating from former values and smaller that it will be punished less. And eventually we mitigated the forgetting and we got the new model which can successfully do both tasks. This is another way to cope with catastrophic forgetting, but honestly I don't see this approach leading to AGI. I personally expect that spiking approach will be performing better for incremental learning. And the whole idea of putting AI to sleep seems somehow logical. You know, even machines need to take a break now and then. Let me know what you think about this idea in the comments below. And thanks for watching, guys. Consider supporting my channel at Patreon. The link will be below. And of course, take your sleep seriously. See you in the next video.